here today to talk to you about urban agriculture in, and food insecurity in the age of climate change. To me, this is a very important topic because food, agriculture, is how we live as people. Every day we eat food, every day we need food. But with climate change, agriculture, the way it traditionally is, by seasons where there's rain um, that's you know pretty much predictable, uh, good soil uh, and sunlight, these are factors that are very important for food production but they're not guaranteed in the age of climate change because of these variations in temperature, rain uh, coming too soon or too much, uh, which can cause flooding or drought from not having enough rain, uh, too much heat, too much coal. All these factors are making agriculture less stable and secure. But I believe that urban agriculture is, is a good alternative. And so what I want to do is to spend some time today Uh, talking to you about these alternatives because really what we're looking for is food security. We need to secure our food supply and with billions of people on the earth and continuing to grow we have to have some alternatives. So in addressing future challenges I have some urban-based solutions that I'd like to, to talk to you about. I will talk a little bit about urban agriculture, community gardens, rooftop gardens, school gardens, controlled environment agriculture, vertical farms, green walls, and ecological cities. So why urban-based solutions? If you look at this chart here, you can see that this is uh, showing the total population on the earth and how much uh, is urban and how much is rural using percentages. And as you can see from the bar graph here, the light brown is urban percentage and the darker brown is rural. And if you look at the 1950s, you can see that uh, 30% of the world's population lived in urban environments, but 70% in rural. But over time, we can see each decade there's a decline. More people move into the cities from the rural environments. Of course, that's making the rural uh, population numbers go down. And so it seemed that around 2010, which was about 10, well, pretty much a decade ago, uh, you can see that there was a shift where uh, over 50% of the world's population lived in urban environments and less than 50% was in rural. Now that we're in 2020, the bar graph is showing that 60% of uh, people live in cities and uh, it's gone down to 40%. There's no bar for 2030, but one could assume that that trend will continue. So here's a definition of urban agriculture. It's the growing and processing and distribution of food in non-food plant, tree crops, and raising of livestock directly for the urban market while within and in the fringe of urban areas. So another way of thinking of it is civic agriculture, where the community gardens, where people can get together and grow food in their own neighborhoods. This is a great thing for children, obviously, to get a chance to see where food comes from, not just from the supermarket, but they could actually grow it themselves. And so the one way for people to feel like they have more control of their food supply and feel more secure is to grow their own food, whether it's in uh, their backyards or in the front yard. Um, And you can also grow it in uh, empty lots and so forth. And so this is a way that we can look at communities having a little more control over what they eat, particularly if we're talking about fresh vegetables, fruits, and so forth. Really what the issue is is about space. With traditional agriculture, you know, we plant across fields on a horizontal, and that takes up, you know, a lot of space, spatial area. But rooftop gardens is is another space where we can can grow food as well. And as you can see from these pictures, there are uh, for commercial use, or for private residential use, there are many ways of doing it, um, large scale, small scale. But when you're thinking about these alternatives, you need to look at space as, as a way of creating yield that's higher. Food to school linkages is another way of looking at food through the lens of schools. And food education is important. 
children learning at an early age where food comes from and having some control of that food supply is an important aspect of becoming um, good citizens, but also what I like to call is prosumers, those who not that's who produce as well, not just consume, but you also produce uh, in your society. So as we say with climate change, you know, the environment is uh, out in the natural world is not something we can control but so much. Seasonal changes are things that we have to just deal with and sometimes um, seasons, seasonal change works out well, other times it can be very destructive. So that's why controlled environmental agriculture is another alternative way where you uh, grow inside. If everybody's seen greenhouses, uh, so that concept of growing inside is really important. Geoponics is the growing with soil. And uh, you have to have a rich soil to, to grow plants. I mean, in fact, plants need soil, not dirt. Dirt is, is not alive, but soil is alive. It's alive with, with microbes and bacteria and, and worms and insects and all kinds of little creatures that are in there breaking down the soil into nutrients. And that's what the plant's roots use to, to, to grow and nourish itself. And then, then we in turn eat those plants. But you can also grow without soil. Another alternative is hydroponics, and that's water-based solutions, where you have a nutrient uh, flow in water. And, and hydroponics is a, a great in way of um, creating more food through a use of water. It's a way of conserving the water, um, having the nutrients that flow and be recycled throughout the system. Plants grow faster. You can grow it inside, protect it from pests, so it's organic. And, um, and vandalism. And, and so there are a lot of advantages. Of course, you need to have the infrastructure, the pumps and the, and the lighting and all of these things. But once you make that initial investment, then it's about maintenance and you can grow food more often and larger volumes. Aeroponics is another way of growing food using nutrients solution. Uh, it's, it's basically spraying the roots of the plant with uh, sort of a nutrient mist. And that way you conserve water and, and the roots get bathed, but you don't, they don't, the roots don't have to really pull or leach the nutrients like out of the soil. It's sort of free flowing and they can just kind of pick it out the air. And it's a, another way of growing plants much quicker and, um, and cleaner. Aquaponics is mixing uh, the growth of plants and fish together in somewhat of an uh, artificial ecosystem. And uh, as you can see in these images here, uh, fish can be grown and, and contained. Um, and with the, with the uh, baroponics system, uh, this is a system where the fish, the poop from the fish, is circulated into the plants uh, as nutrients and then the plants uh, roots sort of filter out those nutrients and put clean water back into the fish tank. And so this is sort of a circular system that uh, can be built, uh, you know, and easily as well. As you can see, a lot of this is about vertical farms, building upwards rather than just outwards, you know. Uh, as you can see that, you know, with space being going upwards, we can, we can put more plants uh, in, a, in a room or even in a building. As you can see in the image to the far left here, that the, this high-rise building, it's, a, it's an artist's rendition. It doesn't really exist right now, but it could exist. And kind of imagine that um, instead of seeing high-rise buildings where people live, you know, you can actually have buildings where we're growing food, plants, flowers, fruits and can imagine the workforce living there, living in a building where they tend to the food as, uh, and then also think at the bottom that you can imagine having a mini mall with boutiques and maybe restaurant, uh, maybe a marketplace where the food that's grown in the building is actually being uh, sold down on the first level. And you can also imagine this having maybe uh, trucks going out to various neighborhoods from this building, providing fresh fruit and healthy vegetables to local communities. 
So it cuts down on the uh, carbon, di carbon dioxide from um, emissions because you know, instead of bringing food in from far away, you have more of a local uh, production there. And um, it provides jobs for people in various areas, such as uh, engineers and botanists and plumbers and salespeople, entrepreneurs. It could be a whole nother economy. Also, green walls, someone could think about green walls as another helpful solution to absorbing carbon out the atmosphere. Um, walls can be decorative, but also is functional to lower the heat island effect, bring the temperatures down and cool it, but as well as provide oxygen. And if you wanted to grow herbs and vegetables and lettuces and so forth, you could have smaller versions of green walls in your backyard and so forth. So once again, these are almost vertical farming. It's kind of going upwards on the side of buildings. We talked about being on the tops of roof. And so all of these are just the beginning of us thinking about a notion of creating the ecological city or ecological cities. Uh, it's a term that's been around for a while, but I think it's a term that we need to revisit and, and move forward, continue to talk about how do we make cities ecological, meaning that they the ecology is part of the whole aspect of living in a city, and that part of that is food production. Some of it can be done in shipping containers as well. Um, these are secure places where we could grow food using vertical farming. If there's flooding or any reason to move these containers, you can move them to higher ground, you can move them to different neighborhoods. They're safe and secure. Buses, there was an uh, image of a bus there, the interior, where some can even, like old school buses, you can grow food in there. It could be a uh, garden bus, uh, or it could be, be, be mo mobile farms where you could drive food to various neighborhoods and, and serve uh, vegetables like in a marketplace out of, out of a bus. So really what it comes down is to innovation. If we want to deal with climate change, we need to think about what are the ways that we can change our cities to be more environmentally balanced and more ecological and provide more food security. The last two images are one of Mazdar uh, in the Middle East, which was an ecological city where they did focus on building structures and vegetation and, and transportation, various ways to make the city more ecologically balanced. The other last image is, um, once again, an artist's rendition of a possible future. But I think this is a future that we should look at, a vision of a place where we can grow food for, to continue to feed the masses of people, provide jobs and opportunity to use alternative forms of energy such as solar and wind, and secure our future as, as humans on this planet. So that's all I have to say for now. Uh, thank you for your time and interest and look forward to seeing you take some of these ideas to heart and helping us create a more sustainable future. Thank you.